Hi everyone, we'll start the session at 8 p.m. Hi everyone. Good morning, good evening. I hope you can hear me and see my screen. Oh, yes, Shashank. Anyone can confirm, please? Oh, Shashank, am I audible? Yes, you are now. Yes, you're, you're audible and your screen is visible. All right, thank you. This meeting is being recorded. So, okay, everyone, I think we're good to start. Every, hi, everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining this session. My name is Mahima, and I'll be your host for the session. Uh, before we go ahead, I would request everyone to be on mute. And in case you have any queries during the session, you can send them through the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask. 
Also, I would request you all to keep your video cameras off during the meeting. So, okay. Um, let me quickly take you through Tech Canvas first. Tech Canvas is an IT uh, certifications training organization for professionals. We help them crack their certification exams in the first attempt. We are IIB endorsed and PMI authorized training partners. We offer certification trainings for courses like CBAP, ECBA, CCBA, Agile, Business Data Analysis, Project Management, and more. All right. Talking about today's session, it is quite helpful for those who are interested in CBAP or CC, CCB examination. We have with us Shashank, who is a seasoned IT professional with more than 15 years of experience. So thank you all for joining in. Over to you, Shashank. Thank you very much, Mahima. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Shashank Jan. As Mahima introduced me to all of you, uh, glad to be taking over this session. And in the next one hour, we'll go through uh, one of our key knowledge area in CBAP, CCBA, or ECBA certification, and that is a strategy analysis. Uh, the agenda will be like this, that uh, I'll uh, first few uh, minutes will have the introduction about this knowledge area and also talking generally about uh, these certifications as I'm assuming that uh, some of you may be very new to the certification, whereas some of you would already be in touch with this uh, certification and maybe already preparing and want to have some sort of uh, uh, brushing up or having some revision over this. Uh, may I quickly ask all of you to put on chat if uh, 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 just just quickly about uh, the years of experience you have, what certifications you are planning for. Uh, that will give me some idea about the audience and accordingly I'll uh, frame or uh, take through all these. So yeah, if you can put that into chat and uh, meanwhile, I'll also start with this session and my introduction has already been given. I am certified business analysis professional with 15 plus years of experience and I have been uh, training a lot of participants for last four or five years for CPAP, CCBA and ECBA and through the entire IIBA and that is International Institute of Business Analysis, which is a nonprofit professional association, which uh, is helping uh, for, for decades for growing field of business analysis. So let me start with this and uh, just so you, all of you understand the certification like certified business analysis professional or CCBA or ECBA like entry level certification in business analysis. These three certifications are mainly for business analysts. CBAP, uh, which is like the highest among these three and uh, someone who is having five plus years of experience into business analysis and, and have some sort of experienced level uh, can go for this certification, which is CBAP. Whereas someone who is in the range of three to five years or seven years, and there are specific requirements as well when it comes to the experience that uh, every individual has in terms of business analysis and accordingly the certification can be chosen. Those who are very new to this uh, profession, uh, they can be someone who are like fresh graduates or someone who is like, who wants to have uh, like a change into their uh, career or who wants to switch from uh, another domain or maybe different profession to business analyst, they can also go ahead with ECBA. The certification, which is CBAT, CCBA, ECBA, they are globally recognized, one of the best uh, certification across business analysis. In today's session, I'll be taking you through one of an important uh, knowledge area. There are totally six knowledge areas in, and the book, which is the framework which has to be referred to, is called as BABOC, which is Business Analysis Body of Knowledge. IIB also have the membership. So uh, once you take the membership, you can get the access to this framework and the book as well, and a lot of good content in regards to business analysis. The book uh, that is called as Babok Guide and uh, full form for that is Business Analysis Body of Knowledge. And it defines the profession of business analysis and it provides a set of commonly accepted practices. 
This is the guide which has to be referred for all these three certification, whether you are going for CBAP, CCBA or ECBA. Only thing that differs across these three is the complexity of the examination. CBAP examination will have a lot of scenario-based questions and case study-based questions. Whereas CCBA will have a little bit of easier scenario-based questions, whereas ECBA will be more across how well you understand this entire practices which are there into BABOK guide. Entire examinations, uh, all these three come from BABOK guide only as such, and that's the reason that uh, the BABOK guide has to be referred quite well. One has to study it at least, read it two to three times. So as you can understand, all the different aspects or the best practices which are there into it. Meanwhile, if you have any question, you can put them into chat as well so that I can take them later all, all together. So that's about BABOK. Um, and that's why it's important for all of you to understand that which guide is referred to the certification because it's important to understand that uh, which where and a lot of people have this question that how should i prepare for it uh, what are the starting point for them is there any guide which has to be referred to and how to prepare for it few folks go ahead with uh, self study whereas there are folks who go ahead with uh, taking the proper training. So IIBA have these education and those providers, EEPs, and uh, like Tech Canvas is one of them, and there are many others as well. So it's always recommended to go to, with uh, taking the training only with the EEPs as you get uh, the certified trainers who are there to train on this. So yeah, coming back to BABOK, and that is Business Analysis Body of Knowledge, it has, so yeah, the guide is like 500 odd pages. And uh, and that's why there needs to be a structured way of uh, how to approach this guide. So continuing with the agenda and purpose of this certification, uh, I will be going through only one of our knowledge area, which is a strategy analysis. There are five more knowledge areas in BABOK guide. However, covering all of them in one hour is not possible. I'll be taking you through the overview of this one of our knowledge area, which is strategy analysis, helpful for you to understand the overview about this knowledge area. I'll also touch base upon other knowledge areas. It'll be helpful for someone who are practicing PAs and uh, so that you understand that there are different tasks which are there in knowledge areas. So yeah, there is a standard structure of all of the knowledge areas uh, there and that is like uh, consistent across all the knowledge areas. So that's how it will help you. So there are total six knowledge areas in uh, BABAK and uh, they are business analysis body, uh, the business analysis planning and monitoring. Another one is elicitation and collaboration. There is strategy analysis as well, as you see here, which we will be going through today. There are three more knowledge areas like solution evaluation, requirement analysis and design definition and requirement. <coughs> life cycle management. So six knowledge areas are there. And when you try to understand the entire structure of BABAK guide, there are six knowledge areas. There are a few chapters for business analysis, key concepts as well. And uh, there are total 50 techniques in BABAK version three. Yeah, version three is the uh, latest version, which although has been in existence since 2016, and that is the version that has to be referred for these certifications. Coming back to the structure of BABAK guide, business analysis key concept chapters are there. There are chap six chapters for knowledge areas, as you see here. There is a chapter for techniques as well. There are total 50 techniques in, uh, in BABAK. May I request uh, those who are not speaking, can you please go on mute or maybe someone who is host can mute others, please, as it will help uh, everyone to listen well. And there is a chapter for, yeah, there is a chapter for perspectives as well. Uh, five perspectives have been added into version three, uh, which are agile, business intelligence, information technology, business architecture and business process management. There is a chapter for key concepts and uh, let's understand uh, more into strategy analysis. So let's first understand what is a strategy, why it is important, 
and uh, as a business analyst where do you fit in and what's your role when it comes to strategy analysis so think of any program or initiative you are working on what you will find that usually this is the first step for any program and uh, this strategy can be applied for entire enterprise complete organization where organization wants to uh, maybe excel into their work bring some new technologies uh, want to expand or have some improvements have some new way of working what all it needs all it needs is that there needs to be a solid strategy every enterprise have some capabilities but to have something new there needs to be have some new additions and that means that there are some aspirations for every organization there are some goals and objectives for them but how this organization can achieve all this all those changes which they are seeking or the goals and objectives which they are seeking and whether it is aligning with their vision and mission right so as a business analyst or there can be different names you can have for that person who is doing that they can be sometimes called as strategy analyst sometimes they are called as business analyst of course anyone who is into role of management consultant also get opportunity to work on this in fact like from babok terminology it's called as strategy analysis when you look at it into real time you will find that the strategy is something that needs to be applied for entire enterprise it can be applied for a division may be applied for a department or a region as well and one more thing to understand here is that strategy doesn't mean that you have to think always about 5 years road map 10 years road map for an organization strategy even can be applied for a entire product as well strategy even can be applied for a single project strategy can be applied for any survey based project and even for a small sprint let's say an iteration of two two weeks is there uh, most of you would be working into agile and you would be seeing that there is a sprint of two weeks in fact you can apply a strategy for that too so that's where you see that strategy is applied in this way and how that is work how you can work on that for that a business analyst has to collaborate with the stakeholders right as a business analyst everything cannot be done alone by a business analyst and that's why bas have to work and collaborate with different stakeholders these stakeholders can be sponsors sometimes they can be someone who is expert into domain when it comes to devising a strategy a business analyst can consult with someone who is expert into implementation talking about it it could be someone who is a developer or maybe different industry if it is about manufacturing industry aviation industry there are specific domain expert implementation expert those who are on field and they know a lot about that domain and while you are working on that strategy or bringing something a tactical kind of solution for them or solving the business needs for them a business analyst strategy analyst or a management consultant or maybe some other job role name who is working on this strategy part has to collaborate with the stakeholders so that's uh, strategy is it helps in providing the context as well for many other things once you have strategy device then you can work on the requirements once the strategy has been done you can work on the planning once a strategy has been devised one can work on all the elicitation of the information the change strategy can be defined overall so that's the strategy um, this is the diagram those who haven't referred or haven't gone through babok version 3 for them this picture may be something new those who have already gone through it can get some idea so this picture looks like this there are three dotted box as you see here there is box for inputs there is middle box for tasks and there are the bottom box is for the output so what does that mean the knowledge area itself is the strategy analysis when i say knowledge area it means one of the activity which business analysts do and that is we are on strategy analysis strategy analysis usually as i said happens in most of the cases when any program initiative starts when that starts what's the role of a business analyst what are the different things that a business analyst do there 
a business analyst has to analyze the current state analyzing the current state means trying to understand that how the how is the current state current means presently how the organization is working which means understanding different aspects like there can be different aspects in current state which is like to understand how is the organizational structure how are the people who are working in the, that organization collaborating with each other it can also be about understanding what are the different capabilities and processes any organization has right so let me take an example here assuming that you are working with some healthcare organization that healthcare organization may be quite traditional of course they will have uh, different facilities uh, different physicians who are working in that hospital this hospital may be working with uh, different uh, labs there are many patients who are coming in but every hospital may have different specialties and that the specialties is what they serve for that's a hospital example let's take an example for some aviation company aviation company would have their own business rules how the passenger booking happens how to have the customer relationships um, how to solve customers problem right every every organization has some current state current state means yes how the people are working together uh, how are uh, how are the ex- uh, current capabilities and processes which are there and uh, it also trying to understand what are the technology and infrastructure which are there right and uh, to understand uh, which are the policies which are there in in that organization it's also about understanding uh what are the different internal assets any organization has because you are trying to understand their present how they are doing currently any organization may have their own financial resources they would have they are different brand names right you are trying to understand and if you think about any company which have different brands and that is how they that organization is known as right it's also about understanding what are the different influences any organization has right any organization doesn't work in silo they have to rely on different things and may have may be impacted by different things trying to understand aviation organization yes that that would be affected by that industry it's also impacted by all the competitors which they may have and who are their customers what are the different suppliers who are there and that's why that is one of a task here that uh, is analyze current state where you try to understand analyze what is the current state but how you do that so to do that you need to have some inputs and that's where this top box is there which says inputs are there and you see seven boxes here which says needs are there influences are there internal and external and uh, there is stakeholder engagement approach elicitation results and confirm many things are there but to understand that when you are working on the first task which is analyze current state for that there are two inputs which are required that is needs what are needs needs are the problem or opportunities which are faced by the organization problem could be uh there are some technical problems due to which uh, the the customers are not happy it could be some opportunities it may be like uh, setting up the business in new territories that's why someone wants to analyze their current state and want to move to new territories bring out some new technology have some new capabilities hire new resources all these will be like the future state for any company right um uh, strategy can be something like this Uh, assume there is an apparel store and that apparel store have their presence online as well as offline through the different stores they are currently into one of a city but right now they may be having for operations in single city itself but now they want to go uh, to their country level which means setting up their business at uh, different cities different states in the country which means yes it will be required to have some new infrastructure which has to be set up 
one has to understand what is the customers which are there are they really going to buy those apparels uh, doing some sort of researches it also means to do some brainstorming session interviews with the existing sponsor of that company trying to understand what are the funding budgets so or what is happening here it's happening that uh, collaboration is happening with different stakeholders to understand the needs right so needs and elicitation results can from elicitation results can from simply means that you applied some technique met with stakeholders you might have interviewed them or you may have done some workshop with them so that you can understand what is the current state you could apply some other techniques as well like you may have done some observation or even you can do some benchmarking and market research as well like go into that domain do some market research about that domain that what are their competitors how they are doing what are the best practices there so that is entirely about this first task which is called as analyze current state there are other tasks as well in this knowledge area which are define future state assessing the risk defining the change strategy so these are the key things which happens when a business analyst is working on strategy analysis so they have to analyze the current state what is the current state as of the date uh, try to understand uh, and elicit the information about the key stakeholders about what should be the future state and uh, current state and future state think about that as like point a and point b point a is where you are standing right now and point b is something which is the goals and objectives that the organization want to achieve that is like your future state which may be achieved in 6 months maybe in a year's time or maybe there may be a multi year project kind of things can be there as well which is like the project is there for 5 years but to move from point a to point b there can be some risks as well and that is why this third task is there about the assessment of the risk and in assessing the risk there are different techniques that can be applied by a business analyst have a documentation of them having the risk register and again risks can be understood from different unknowns and after that a business analyst define the change strategy that how to move from point a to point b or say how to move from current state to the future state and that's where a business analyst define the change strategy as you see in the bottom box uh, there are outputs and they are numbered as well so you may be thinking that what is 6 what is 4 some numbers are like 5.3 few numbers are like 3.2 what does that mean so as per babak now babak version 3 the chapter number 6 is called as a strategy analysis within chapter 6 there are four tasks as you see here 6.1 till 6.4 analyze current state define future state assess risks define change strategy once this task is completed means once you have analyzed the current state you will come up with some output or start output is so that you can understand from here 6.1 6.1 so there are two outputs from the first task and they are current state description and the business requirements so once you have analyzed the current state you you took in input as needs and elicitation results you come up with the current state description and the business requirements current state description means what are the enterprise capabilities what are the different resources an organization has what is the culture which has been followed in that organization if there are any external influences what are the significant relationships as well between different elements which are there in that business and that's when you have documented that and uh, understood that well analyze that information that's your current state description and you also come up with business requirements business requirements are the problem opportunity or any constraint based on your understanding of the current state so you see here like 6.1 the both these are the outputs 6.2 define future state for that once you have defined the future state you will have clearly documented the business objectives as well as the future state description you also understand potential value once the third task and again this is not like sequential thing which means once you have done that then only you can do that it might happen you may doing things in parallel as well and that is also possible 
once you have assessed the risk, you will come up with the risk analysis results. And once you have defined the change strategy, you will come up with change strategy and the solution scope. As I said, that the strategy is not only applied at the start of a project or when you look at the entire organization itself. The strategy even can be applied while you are writing the requirements for a sprint where you elaborated few user stories from the backlog. And for that also, you can have your strategy. And that's where sometimes the inputs also are like some things like requirements prioritize, designs prioritize. You also have to rely on a lot of elicitation results because you have to collaborate with the stakeholders. They tell their requirements, they tell their problems, or you analyze what are the opportunities there. And that's why elicitation results, which is another knowledge area, which is elicitation and collaboration. There are there are uh, there are the tasks and the outputs from them are like elicitation results, confirmed and in unconfirmed state, and that becomes the input here. So that's like a summarized picture of this entire knowledge area. Four tasks are there and tells about what are the inputs and outputs. So here are the four tasks. Analyze current state, define future state, assess risks, and define change strategy. Let's understand what are the different elements. And as I talked about already, like while analyzing the current state, one has to understand from where business needs are coming. Business needs can come from four different places. It can come from top down, which is like, which could be a strategic goal coming from maybe a CEO or someone who is the sponsor of any initiative. The business needs can also come from bottom up, which means it can come from the people who are working on ground and they know what is the problem with the current state, what are the problems they faced on daily basis within different functions or systems they use. Business need can also come from the middle management. Assume that a manager wants to have a report on a daily basis in the morning 10 a.m. so that they can make some down sound decisions for throughout the day and make some strategy. They can also come from the external drivers, which means the needs are coming from the customers. Customers are selling, telling that they are facing some problem. Or there may be some business competition, some new competitors are there in the business or in the industry. So yeah, all these things become the business needs. While you analyze the current state, you have to understand the organization structure and culture, who reports to whom, what sort of uh, culture is being followed in the organization, what are the relationships between different stakeholders or the people who are working in the organization. It's also about understanding the different capabilities and processes. Some enterprises are capability centric, some enterprises are process centric. Process centric means where they want to improve some of their current activities. Technology and infrastructure understanding is also one of the things that has been analyzed by current state. Policies understanding, business architecture understanding, internal assets like financial resources, patents, reputation, brand names, that understanding is also part of analysis of current state. External influencers are also something which a busy A has to understand, understanding which industry you are working for, which are the different competitors, suppliers, political and regulatory environment, macroeconomical factors like how are the trades, unemployment, inflation are happening for that organization because that may influence the needs. Now, how you do that analyze current state? Do you need to use some techniques? Yes, there are some techniques that you can use for analyzing the current state. As I mentioned, there are total 50 techniques in PAPA. And in fact, for this task itself, there are 26 techniques which are relevant. These are the techniques. Once you know them that these are the relevant techniques, as per the situation, you can use the relevant techniques. It's not like always you have to apply all of the 26 techniques while you are analyzing the current state. And that's where you apply your uh, business analysis skills, you apply your underlying competencies to choose what is best in a particular situation. In different domains, different kinds of techniques can be applied. Some of the important techniques when it comes to analyzing the current state is like doing benchmarking and market analysis. Sometimes, you may have to work on the business model canvas where you try to understand that what is what are the different needs by the customers. 
business cases you can prepare in strategy analysis business case is something any program starts with which is about capturing the business needs recommending the solutions uh, mentioning what could be the risks and the constraints there are different techniques as well like financial analysis metrics and kpis uh, different process analysis like when it comes to like assume you are when you have gone to a factory which is about packaging food and you want to understand what are what is their current process so you may apply technique of observation where you can see uh, what are the different opportunities are there what are the insights you can have within a factory which process take how much time where are the inefficiencies that's about analyzing the current state when it comes to define future state so once you have analyzed the current state you came up with current state description you also came up with business requirements then you can work upon the future state definition as well which is about uh, defining what are the in the future state what how the business processes would look like if there is any need in terms of upskilling the staff is there any new functions that need to be there if there is any need for upgrading the technology infrastructure is there a need for having some new trainings some new facilities set up any new data and information that needs to be increased everything is like defining the future state and it can be across these categories so to work upon future state a business analyst needs to have business requirements and these business requirements come once you have analyzed the current state so in defining the future state uh, you can define the business goals and objectives and these can be across the business goal can be sometimes look like increasing the employee satisfaction it can be improving the safety it can be taking some competitive advantage or it can be increasing the sales or doing some reduction in terms of the cost the business goals should be and the objective should be smart which is like they should be specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound while defining the future state a ba also define the scope of the solution space note down document all the constraint there are constraints which could be there because it's all about looking forward you are having a plan which would be executed in coming times but to achieve them there could be some constraints constraints can be on budgets that this is the x number of dollars which are available and that within this a future state has to be met it could be time restrictions as well that within 6 months we have to achieve this it could be even technology as well as and an organization cannot use like 10 technology at the same time there are some organization start standards about using a particular technology so yeah that can be sometimes a constraint as well any other constraint as well have to be considered it's also about uh, uh, defining in the future state that how the organization structure may change you can also recommend as a business analyst that how the new uh, hierarchy may look like in case if there is a need to change some reporting structures because it may be impacting the future state what could be the new technology and infrastructure that is required what is the new policies have to be there what are the potential value that is expected and once you have worked upon the definition of future state you will get the outputs like business objectives future state description and potential value business objectives which are smart then future state description as well that what are the future state capabilities that are expected by the business what are the resources that needs to be there what are the different infrastructure that needs to be there how the influences and how that can be utilized and potential value as well that what would be the potential value once the proposed future state has been implemented what would be the benefit what would be the outcomes and that's like the potential value that you define by defining the future state as i said that moving from current state to the future state there could be some risks as well risks are undesirable consequences of any internal and external force a business analyst has to analyze the risk to understand that how often that risk may happen or it could be what could be the impact of that risk what would be the possible consequences if that risk occurs that's why it's important to assess the risk as well and how to mitigate them and there are 
relevant techniques as well that can be used here. To assess the risk, there are different inputs that can be taken in consideration. They are business objectives, which you have already got while you define the future state. To assess the risk, one has to rely on the elicitation results because sometimes there are many things that you have to understand from your key stakeholders because you sometimes may be new to a particular domain. Sometimes you are just freshly kept as a business analyst and it might be possible that you are quite new to this. So you meet with the stakeholders and get the elicitation results from them. There are other inputs as well for it, like influences, potential value, requirements as well, and prioritized rate. How to assess the risk? One of the thing is like, yeah, there could be some unknowns. And when there are unknowns, PA has to collaborate with the stakeholders to assess such risks about current understanding. Assessing the risk is also about analyzing the constraints, assumptions, and dependencies. It's also about understanding negative impact to the value because of that risk. If that risk occurs, what happens? And how you are going to tolerate that risk? And there are three ways to tolerate a risk. It could be risk aversion, which is like an organization and the stakeholders or the key people who are there in that organization say that they are unwilling for having any uncertainty. We need to have very less uncertainty and accordingly our investments would be there. So one of our risk tolerance is being risk averse or risk aversion. Another one is being neutral to it, which is like, yes, if some sort of some level of risk is acceptable and we would have some alternative for it or we would have some course of action uh, so that there is no loss for the business. Another risk tolerance is risk seeking as well. Sometimes there is a willingness to accept the risk because there is an expectation that there would be higher returns or in terms of higher potential value. That's like risk seeking. Based on the different risks which are being assessed or analyzed by a BA, after that, a BA can make the recommendations that how to deal with those risks. Some of the recommendation could be like, pursue the benefit of the change, no matter whatever risk is there. It could be about seeking out the ways that how to outweigh the risk. It can also be about identifying the ways to manage and optimize the opportunity. And sometimes a risk uh, recommendation could be, do not pursue the benefit of a change. So these are the ways and that are likely recommendations for the assessment or post assessment of the risk. What are the recommendations? What are the important techniques that can be used when it comes to assessing the risk? One of the important techniques is risk analysis and management. Risk analysis and management is about identifying the risk as you can identify the such risk by help of some expert judgments, taking the inputs from the key stakeholders, doing some experimentation can also help in identifying some risk or relying on the past experiences or say some historical analysis as well. And you can prepare a risk register, which is about noting down what is the risk event or condition, what could be the consequence of it. And like you have to also assess that what could be the probability of that happening. And uh, what is the risk modification plan for that? That's how you prepare the risk identification. And you can also set up the risk impact scale, whether the risk may have low impact, medium impact, or if it has in high impact and how you are going to treat that risk. So there are different ways to treat a, or address a risk. You can uh, do it by avoiding it totally, which is like whatever is the source of the risk, it's simply removed. It could be transferring as well, by transferring it to someone who is expert that, at handling that risk. You can mitigate the risk by reducing the probability of risk by uh, how often it happens. Another way to treat a risk is to accept it, which is like to decide not to do anything about the risk. Or it could be about increasing the risk as well as you see that there, are, there is a possibility of high returns. So that's like one of the important technique that's about assessing the risk, which is risk analysis and management. The key stakeholders with whom like you would be thinking that whom should I reach out to 
assess that is. And one of the important stakeholder here is domain subject matter expert because they are expert at that domain. They have some expertise. You can also reach out to implementation subject matter experts as well. Assessment of the risk can also be done with people who are into operational support because they know they, they support day-to-day uh, -day activities. They know what are the possible risks. Sponsors as well, because you have to tell them that, that these are the possible risks and to mitigate them, some authorizations may be required or it may be some fundings may be required as well. So to dealing with those risks, you would need to know which are the stakeholders that need to be consulted. So yeah, coming back to the structure of a BABOC, every task will have its purpose, description, what are the different elements which are there and which techniques that you can use. And more importantly, you need to understand what is the context of using a particular technique for a task. And once you have done that task, what is the output of it? Because the output which you have got, you are not doing anything for just doing it and having some conversations and you did not come up with anything. That's where you come up with the output and every task has the output. Every task will also tell which are the stakeholders who can be consulted to conduct that task. So that's about assessment of the risk. And the last task in this knowledge area is defining the change strategy. So far, a business analyst has analyzed the current state, uh, defined the future state as well, assess any risk that could occur to move from current state to the future state, and post that the change strategy can be defined, which is about, uh, about having the proper release planning, knowing when to do what, timelines as well, and uh, uh, what is the entire scope as well, so that now you have a boundary that these are the elements that have to be built, or this is what these are the expectations from a future state. It's also about understanding the justification as well, that why a particular change strategy is the best approach. Who are the different key stakeholders that would be required in the change? Because if it is like a multi-year project, you need to know which are the key stakeholders that would be there. If any key stakeholders move out of the program, who would be the alternative as well? So defi for defining the change strategy, the key inputs are knowing what is the current state description, which already has been worked upon while you analyze the current state, you got that as an output. After that, you also need to know what is the future state description. Future state description you got while you have worked upon defining future state. Even assessment of uh, risk is also something which you have already done and that, that's where you come up with the risk analysis result and that also is an input to the definition of change strategy and also a stakeholder engagement approach because you need to know with stakeholders you are going to work along for a program who needs to be there, which also means to understand how well you understand who is having what level of influence, which stakeholder is going to be impacted, and based on that, you define the change strategy. So solution scope is about scoping entirely because you have defined the future state so you can tell what capabilities are required and, and have the documentation in terms of the change strategy what are the new technologies that are required? What is the knowledge and skill that will be required uh, by the entire team in case if there are any work workflows which are changing, uh, if there is any need to have some change into organizational structures, any functions needs to be changed, all such things have to be defined in the solution scope. Gap analysis as well, you can perform. It's also important to understand how ready is the enterprise for a change. If the enterprise is not ready for the change, then it will be really difficult to go along and have the execution. So a BA has to do this assessment as well in terms of understanding uh, what is the cultural readiness of the stakeholders, uh, if there is any need for operational readiness as well, and you define the change strategy, which is about having the timelines that how quickly the value realization will take place. You can also work along with different stakeholders to build up the timelines as well. So that's where you do the change strategy. Um, there are different techniques as well when it comes to change strategy, having the balance of scorecards, 
benchmark and market analysis, business capability analysis can also be done for doing some prioritization because here you have to do the release planning along with the different key stakeholders, maybe with the project manager or sponsor, and you place the things that in which release, what all features could go on. You also refer to the business case. And in this business case, you capture what are the recommended changes because change strategy will tell that these are the alternatives or the recommendations that have to be there. While defining the change strategy, you also need to know the technique of estimation because you need to determine the timelines as well for the change strategy. There are different methods which are there in BABUP when it comes about doing the estimation. It's like top-down, bottom-up, parametric estimation. Sometimes there may be rough order of magnitude where there is a very wide confidence interval. Rolling wave is another estimation technique. Delphi is as well there. PERT is there. So there are... Some formula-based questions are also there. And, and even these things, you can also ha use it into your day-to-day -day work when it comes to doing the estimation. So yeah, a very relevant techniques when it comes to defining the change strategy. There are many other techniques as well which are relevant when it comes to defining the change strategy. Here are some of the key techniques across this entire knowledge area, whereas for each of the tasks as well, as I discussed, there are the relevant key techniques. However, the important key techniques for this entire knowledge area or while you are working on this activity, those key techniques are having the knowledge about writing how to write the business cases, how to prepare the business model canvas, how you can do the analysis over the business capabilities, which is about looking at the different capabilities and finding out where are the gaps, where are the risks, how valuable it is for business, what is the value that it brings. Other techniques are balance the scorecard as well, doing the SWOT analysis, financial analysis as well, risk analysis and management, very relevant technique when it comes to assessing the risk and doing a vendor assessment as well. While you working on the change strategies, while you are going to find out a new vendor, a BA needs to know the technique of a vendor assessment as well, where you have to assess how much knowledge and expertise a uh, vendor has, or what are the different licensing and pricing model they have? What is their position as well uh, into the market? In case if there are any terms and conditions they have, what are their experiences, reputation and stability into the market? And that's why vendor assessment is also an important technique. As we discussed that there are four tasks and there is a way that you can connect all these tasks as well to understand that how each of these connect, tasks connect with each other. So the first task in this knowledge area has been analyze current state. Second task is define future state. Third task is assess risks. Fourth task is define change strategy. We discussed about that to perform every task, there are some inputs required. Once you have worked upon that task, you come up with some output. Those outputs can be used by another tasks as well. Then looking at the inputs, the inputs are for analyzing the current state. They are needs and the elicitation results. Once you have analyzed the current state, you come up with two outputs, which are business requirements and current state description. While you work on defined future state, you have to take an input, which is business requirements, but you got it once you have worked upon first task and the output was business requirements. There are three outputs that you get once you have worked on this task, which is defined future state, and they are business objectives, potential value, and future state description. For assessing the risk, there are six inputs that are required. However, two comes from the previous two, and that is business objectives and potential value. The output for the third task or the assess risk is the risk analysis result. While defining the change strategy, there are four inputs that are required, three from the previous task as well as the stakeholder engagement approach and the output for it is solution scope and change strategy. So, to understand what is the real life application of strategy analysis of this knowledge area, uh, you, when you are having this kind of role, which is strategy consultant, management consultant, enterprise analyst, or BA, uh, and you have to work upon 
doing the current state analysis. You have to work upon defining a strategy. You have to build the roadmap, or you have to work upon business capability analysis. Prepare the business case or business model canvas. You can take all the learnings from this knowledge area, which is strategy analysis. To understand what is the number of questions, and uh, uh, to understand quickly that how many uh, tasks are there, how many inputs are there, and uh, what are the number of elements are there, number of outputs for each of the tasks, how many techniques are there, what are the number of stakeholders that can be consulted then? So this is a quick snapshot about this entire knowledge area. All right, so with this, I have uh, covered up the overview for the entire knowledge area, which is strategy analysis. If you have any questions, you can please unmute yourself or maybe put that Put those questions into chat. Anyone have any question? Yeah, hello. Hey. Can you hear you? Yeah, can I, you hear you? Yeah, I just wanted to ask. Um, so when you're trying to uh, define future states, mm -hmm. is that way you'll be performing a gap analysis? The gap analysis can be performed while defining the change strategy. Okay. Yep. Because defining the future state is about working with the stakeholders and and that's why in babak in strategy analysis knowledge area we have everything uh, separated or say compartmentalized in defining the future state you define what are the expectations in terms of uh, solution space constraints organization structure means it means you do not limit yourself first because if you focus on gap analysis first then you cannot capture entire things about the expectations from the future state. And that's why gap analysis is being done while you are defining the change strategy, when you have worked well on current state assessment and the future state assessment, you have both the things uh, readily available with you. And then you do the gap analysis because with that, you can have your proper change strategy. Gap analysis you do in terms of understanding what are the gaps in current processes and the future process, mm -hmm. gaps between different functions, gap between trainings that are required, gap between different staff mm -hmm. competencies that is required. That is where you do the gap analysis. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Hello. 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 Ask for some yep. Uh, how I can define the stakeholder? So there is a list of stakeholder. Uh, there is a process as well to interact with the stakeholders. So as per BABOK, there is a standard set of stakeholders. And uh, you then work with uh, all the stakeholders to find out that how you are going to uh, engage with them, right? So yeah, in different programs, you will find different set of stakeholders are there. In some of the programs you will find there is a sponsor and there may be a lot of uh, people from implementation. There may be a project manager as well. So the, the generic list of stakeholders as per BABOK is total 11. They are business analyst, customer, domain subject matter expert, end user, implementation SME, operational support, project manager, regulator, sponsor, supplier, and tester. Now coming to your question, which is about how I define or know which all stakeholders have to be there, right? So it means, and that's where you have to work or use the learnings from another knowledge area, which is business analysis, planning, and monitoring. And there is a task which is called as plan stakeholder engagement. And in that, you can use different techniques 
which are like organizational modeling. There is another technique, which is a stakeholder list map or personas. With a stakeholder list map or personas, with that technique, first you list down all the different stakeholders who are there. Then it might not be required that you have to interact with all of them. So you can work upon creating a stakeholder map where you find out which stakeholders are highly influential, which are having a lot of impact on the program. And accordingly, you work with that stakeholder. So you can prepare a stakeholder metrics and place such stakeholders into those metrics that who is highly influential and who is highly impacted. Because if those kind of stakeholders are there, you have to work with them quite closely because you need to get their agreement and support for the change. There may be some stakeholders which you will find that they are less influential and they have less impact as well, but it doesn't mean that you simply ignore them. You still have to monitor such stakeholders that their interest or influence do not change. You can also prepare the RACI metrics as well to define which stakeholders are responsible, accounted, accountable, consulted, and informed. So basically, it's about performing the stakeholder analysis, finding out different roles of people who are there. You also should understand what are their attitudes. More importantly, understand who is decision-making authority as well and who is having level of power or influence as well because you need their buy-in and collaboration most of the time for a successful uh, implementation or execution. When it comes to that, you also have defined how you are going to collaborate with them. Understand in case if they are located at a different geographies, uh, what are the different timings and frequencies of such collaborations would be. So this is how you can engage with your stakeholders and accordingly you can work on your strategy analysis. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. Yeah, I have a question. Yep. Uh, Go ahead. I, you know, thank you for the lecture. Um, I I sometimes ha I have difficulty in in differentiating change strategy and design options, right? So change strategy, mm -hmm. which is um, strategy strategy analysis, and um, define design options, which is in mm -hmm. requirements and design definition, right? So those two concepts or two mm -hmm. um, um, tasks mm -hmm. um, sure. they, they, um yeah yeah confused surely i uh, yeah i i understand that yeah there may be a confusion between both these where there is defined change strategy which is in strategy analysis knowledge area defined design options which is in requirement analysis and design definition so here i would like to explain here that defined change strategy you do it while you are defining these strategies and take it as a big picture where you define the change strategy in terms of how to move from point A to point B, how to have, uh, how to achieve the future state. But when it comes to define the design option, it's like uh, define change strategy is like having a 10,000 feet view. Whereas defining the design option is like you come quite closer, zoomed in, uh, went into specific requirements and to achieve those requirements, what are the supporting designs which are there? So to achieve any solution, there may be designs that have to be accommodated along with the requirements. So defining the design options, the purpose of that task is to define the solution approach. There may be different solution approach, which can be like you may build everything in-house or it can be you buy something or you may have some custom solutions, which is like you build some 50% yourself or integrate 50% from the outside. But yeah, while defining the design options, you need to know what is the change strategy. And that is why you will find that while defining the design options, one of the input is change strategy. Without change strategy, you cannot define the design options. So yeah, change strategy is something which you do uh, initially, uh, to understand the big picture uh, but based on the current state and uh, future state. Whereas defining the design option is all about how you aid your implementation team, developers, or those who are people who are going to build the solution. You have to provide them some inputs. For that, you define the design options where you 
work along with the solution architects or someone who is from the solutioning team in terms of defining the solution approaches, which is like, as I said, buy something, build something, or make some custom solutions. It's also about having some improvement opportunities, identification, and allocating the requirements. In, define, in defining the design options, you allocate the requirements. Whereas in defining the change strategy, you allocate the key features across the releases. Right, that is another main difference between these two. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's clear. Welcome. All right, we are on time. Mahima, do you have any closing notes? Uh, yeah, actually, I have an announcement to make. Mm -hmm. So, Tech Canvas is offering a CBAP CCBA mega mantle. So, see what happens, and aspirants end up spending huge amounts of money on the training and IB membership fees, exam fees, and then the application fees. So, we have a fantastic opportunity, and we are reducing the total cost of certification for CBAP CCBA, ECB, and other IIB certification. So in the CBAP or CCBA Mega Bundle, we are offering uh, CBAP CCBA preparation training, IIB membership fees, IIB application fees, and the IIB examination fees. All this for 750 USD. So if you are interested, you can just visit our website for more information. And also, I've seen a lot of queries regarding the recording of this session. It will be available on our YouTube channel once this webinar is over. Yeah, I think Sushank, there's one more question there. If you can have a look. Uh, where is that question? I don't see it on the chat. Uh, it's there. Uh, the gap analysis is it done only for improvement of a process or when building a process from scratch? Um, my apologies, I do not see it on chat. But yeah, whoever has that question can discuss uh, maybe. Okay, or can you read it again? Sure. Uh, it's saying the gap analysis, uh, is it done only for improvement of a process or when building a process from scratch? It can be done in both the situations. Okay. Yeah. If anybody has any more doubts, you can uh, drop them in the chat box so we can wrap up this session. So I think, Shashank, we are good to go. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone, yep. for joining in. Yep. Thank you, everyone. All the best.